Good evening. My name is Sean, and I'm a pyro. I like to set stuff on fire. Pretty sure you do too, otherwise I don't think you really would have clicked this link. Anyway, what we are doing today is I'm going to show you how I built my little flamethrower. Now this thing really only cost me about 50 bucks to put together. Granted, I got the tank for free from somebody. It was kind of helpful, but I'm going to give you some options for that later on in the video. <clears throat> so this is my basic setup right here. It's just an old solvent tank, air valve, little control knob and a gauge, little down tube inside the tank, and it goes right up through this hose that runs to the back of a ball valve. Now, I like ball valves because they're a lot more robust, I think, than pressure washer gun handles, and this one doesn't even have any rubber seals to have to worry about. It just stays sealed perfectly. It's basically just a quick quarter turn, all the way on, all the way off. Now, that just goes into some random plumbing parts that I had sitting around here. <clears throat> Most of what this is is just a quarter inch NPT piping. It's got a couple of connectors, and it had a couple of <clears throat> old air hose sections over it just for looks, but... Yeah, doesn't really do shit. And basically that all goes up to a reducer and to the nozzle right here. Now this is my biggest nozzle. It's a 316 center diameter. This one gives me the longest flame. This guy right here, uh, running about 130 pounds of air, will go damn near 50 feet. I, with rubbing alcohol, I think I can probably get it to go to 55 if I use the 70%. But I've got another video that shows that. <clears throat> Really all that's left is just the basic burns matic torch. You just turn the valve on, light it. I keep mine mounted at about a 45 degree angle. That way the <clears throat> fuel doesn't drip down on the torch pallet and put it out. Because that could be a total fucking pain in the ass. But other than that, it just intersects the fuel stream about three and a half, four inches from the tip. And that kind of keeps it safe from, you know, potential flashback if you're using volatile fuel. Now on that note, <clears throat> this thing I built just to use diesel and kerosene. For the most part. But <clears throat> the reason I do that, diesel and kerosene, they're not volatile. You have to vaporize them, or I should say atomize them, before they'll really ignite. You could hold a lighter to a puddle of it all day, it ain't going to do shit. Might burn just a little bit like a candle, but that's not going to cause anything to blow up. Now, <clears throat> having said that, I have used other fuel in this as well. I've used isopropyl alcohol, gasoline, and denatured alcohol. All of those, gasoline being the most dangerous, can carry a little bit more risk because they put off a lot of flammable vapor. There are, now to speak to that, there are a lot of myths about these things. <clears throat> you know, there's, everybody will say, oh, it's just going to carry back into the tank and blow up. Not really. And the best way I can explain it is why car gas tanks don't explode in real life, even if they're shot with an incendiary. <clears throat> there's just not enough vapor pressure inside the tank theoretically, to blow the walls of it out if the flame were to carry back into it. Now, I don't have a flashback arrestor on this one yet because I've mostly just been using the diesel and kerosene. Yeah, I've used the other stuff, but I know what I'm doing. Now, the only time you're going to have a problem with this flame ever having a chance of coming back into the tank is when you are completely out of fuel, the gun starts sputtering and blowing spray out the end. You've got probably 10, 15 seconds of doing that before it's going to get anywhere near going back. And I've tried to get it to go back in there, and I can't, even with gas. But it's something to be careful with. Essentially, the only time that can happen is when it's at the very, very end of the pressure, and you've got less than a PSI left in the tank. There is a possibility, once that pressure gets really low, it could carry back. Now, with this length of line, probably not going to happen. But if you're going to use volatile fuels, you have to have a check valve. Period. I cannot recommend using them without one. So that's that. Now, <clears throat> this thing right here, it's, it's really simple. This is just our little fill valve for the air. You can see it's got a little gauge on there. <clears throat> this one's got a, <clears throat> well it's designed for a female and quick connect for an air compressor. You can put a Schrader valve on this as well. It's easy to interchange it. You can get one of those at any hardware store. Basically, we just hook the compressor up to this, open this valve up, and that'll let the air in. I like to run it up right around to 120 or 130 pounds. That's the, the best pressure. You can get it to run clear down at like 40 or 50, but your fuel stream doesn't ignite as well because it's less atomized. 
Other than that, there's just a little tube. You can't really see it in this shot, but it just runs from the hose clear down to the bottom of the tank. It's got a quarter inch inner diameter. My hose is a little bigger than that. It works well. You ideally want to have your cross section of the line the same all the way up to the nozzle. You can have another little expansion chamber up here if you want to try it, get it to build up a little additional pressure. But, you know, it's not really that critical with something that's only operating at 130. Now, basically, <clears throat> To get it going, all you got to do is pour your fuel in through here. It's got kind of a weird lid to it. It's got a little, uh, <clears throat> I think this is a nitrile rubber ring that goes around it that seals it against the top of the tank. Once you're fueled up, you put that in there. Make sure it's firm up against that. Tuck that down, and then you can fill it up. Once you've filled it up and you've closed this valve off so it doesn't let the air back out, you are ready to go. You just open the valve on the propane up, light the pilot flame, hold the motherfucker down like this, and just throw that valve open. Boom. Done. It ignites every time. So <clears throat> more than anything, that's, that's pretty much the basics of this thing. It's not rocket science at all. The uh, <clears throat> Fittings on here, I mean, they're, it's all just done out of standard hardware stuff based on, you know, national pipe thread, NPT. The nozzles are eighth inch NPT, the adapter here is a quarter inch, and then it goes back to the actual barrel. And I think that's a quarter inch as well, I can't remember. Then it just screws into this fitting right here, this is just for a little extra grip, and I didn't have a right proper fitting to fix the fucking thing. So I had to improvise, whatever. Then it just hose clamps behind the ball valve, and that's that. Now, there are a couple of things I also wanted to show you. This nozzle I've got right here is, is my biggest one. That's the farthest shooting. The thicker the fuel stream, the farther it's going to carry. This little one is the one that I custom drilled. It's a one or .180 diameter, so yeah, just a little bit bigger than a BB. This one gives me... Mm, probably 25 to 30 feet of range. My smallest one is a tiny ass little hose barb. Eighth inch inner diameter. And again, all of these are threaded eighth inch NVT. This one will give me about 15 to 20 feet. This one's best used in the backyard if you don't want to scare the living fuck out of your neighbors and have them think Hiroshima is happening again. This one and my 3 sixteenths, they'll light this place up like it's the middle of the fucking day. Don't do it when cars drive by. They're gonna slam on their brakes or hit something. I don't think my neighbors like me that much either. But fuck it, you gotta have fun. Now, <clears throat> the last couple of things, the, there are some improvements that I do need to make. This tank is only rated for about a, eh, 150 PSI max. I know it'll go over that because they're always paranoid with their safety ratings. But <clears throat> just in case you don't have access to a solvent tank like this, these are this thing is just really easy. It was already plumbed up for me. Had all the fittings. I just put the hose on it, put some shit in it, connected it to the gun. Bam. That's done. Now, if you can't find a fancy-ass solvent tank like this, you can use an old propane tank, or in this case, a Freon cylinder. This is just refrigerant. If you contact a local heating and cooling company, they can probably sneak you an empty one of these. These are really good because of the way they're threaded. It's really easy to drill and tap them because they have a good thick wall and the threads will bite into. And these, I believe, are rated up to around 800 PSI. So with compressed air, it's just not gonna, you're never gonna have a problem with it popping. All the other parts that you're gonna use here are gonna be rated for at least 1500 to 2000 PSI. So it's really safe in that regard. Now, with this right here, you would have to do a little bit of drilling and tapping, but you can find tutorials on YouTube all over the place and they'll tell you exactly how to do it. It's not that hard. You could spend 15 or 20 bucks for a set of caps and dies at Harbor Freight and do everything you need. Now, having said that, what we're gonna do is hook the air hose up to it, put a little, well, I gotta put some diesel in first. Then we're gonna take it outside for a quick test fire. We'll do a little point of view of what it looks like to be behind this thing. So, one second. Okay, now, we open the top here, it's got a little bit of diesel in it, but we're going to put some more. 
because with this nozzle, the 3 sixteenths, it will drain a gallon of fuel in just about 12 seconds if you hold it all the way down. So that thing, it's a fucking gas hog. It's worse than a goddamn El Camino. Now, with the smaller nozzles, <clears throat> this one, eh, I don't even know how long. I've only used it a couple of times, but the eighth inch inner diameter one, you can play with this thing all night, it seems like, without blinding yourself. So, let's put a little diesel in. Now, recommendation with diesel and kerosene, they fucking stick. So, if you're gonna be out shooting it, probably not the best idea to do it in your backyard. I got my ass chewed out for that because it leaves diesel all over the ground from some of the unignited spray. And, it, well, it, you, you can say it's not, not, not that good for your grass. Okay, I'm getting tired of holding this fucking thing. Okay, <clears throat> then we'll just put the lid back on. Put the seal in there, right? Come on, bastard. Bump that down. Slightly close that little valve. Put that up. And we're going to run this one up right around 100, 110, I think. That's good. Make sure to close that really tight because you do not want this shit spraying right back at you. You will get fuel all over the fucking face. <clears throat> okay. That's pretty much that. <clears throat> so, I think let's take this thing outside for a test run. Now I'm going to have to pull my camera off here. Actually, hold that thought. Well, guys, I'm going to have to pause the video because I, like a dumbass, left my fucking lighter up in the house. Right back.